Well, it's a real honour to have you here with me this afternoon. Thank you. Kendrick. Um, so really what I wouldn't mind doing is just getting a little bit of an idea of um, your history and background and how you got to make this immense debut official album. Thank you. Do you want to tell me a little bit about your background? and? Okay. Um, Kendrick Lamar. Um, Compton, California. Born and raised. Really uh, started this music thing back when I was 16 independent label called Top Dog Entertainment. We put out a few mixtapes locally in the city, um, L.A., you know, and build the buzz out there, start selling our shows. Um, New York started selling our shows. And um, eventually it caught the ear of Dr. Dre, you know, our label, Top Dog Entertainment. And um, got in the studio with him, started working. And um, it, was, it was a great experience. It was a creative experience. The next week he said he wanted to sign me, Top Dog Entertainment slash Aftermath. Yep. You couldn't have gone higher from the beginnings, right? Right. I mean, would there have been anything higher than Dre at that point in your career, coming from Compton? And Probably everything? not, coming from the West Coast. Wow. Well, Probably not. Yeah. Okay, so that was a year and a half ago now, two years ago? Yeah, oh. almost two years ago. Okay. Yeah, blur. This? Went back quick. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened after that? Um, after that, I was right in the studio working on my debut album. Probably like a six months process we warmed it up with the recipe featuring dr dre then we came with my first debut single which was swimming pools Hold up. Frank, Frank. headshot Frank, Frank. sit down Frank, Frank. stand up Frank, Frank. pass out Frank, Frank. wake up Frank, Frank. fade it Frank, Frank. fade it Frank, Frank. now i done grew around some people living their life in bottles Grand Frank, Frank. 12 tracks 12 different producers yeah that struck me yeah. I mean, and, and the album to have such a, an amazingly consistent flow about it. Tell me about how you sort of chose who was going to work on the beats with you and, you know, how you managed to make it work. Yeah, I'm really hands on with the production. You know, I'm very picky, you know, when it comes to, to sound details and um, different drum patterns and how I want to rap, you know. It's not just me getting a whole bunch of beats and rapping on them. It's me actually sitting in there with the producers and... and you know, giving my input because at the end of the day, the album has to sound cohesive. I don't want it to sound like a compilation disc. You've done it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's just talk about some of the tracks. I mean, it's good to see Pharrell on the album. Uh -huh. You worked with him previously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have like four tracks, or well, more than four tracks, probably about six, seven that was in the can, but this one really just fit the concept. Yep. And there's a good sample in that track as well. Right. Well, a good use. You know, the Royers. Yeah. Original. Yep. And uh, a lovely split and twist on that one. We live in Brooklyn, baby. That's a hallucination, baby. We're trying to make it, baby. Wanna reconnect with your elation. This is your station, baby. BBC Radio. Six Music. The other track which um, I wanted to find out about, and this is another uh, aspect of the music because you're hitting that soul, you're hitting the whole aspect of hip hop right. and full 360 degrees. But Mary J working with Jack Splash as well. Yeah, yeah, who's, definitely. Who's an old friend of mine. Okay. How did that um, come about? We had a small little meeting in LA, a little small little studio session. He was just playing a bunch of tracks. And, um, that was the last track he played and uh, we just got inspired. I started writing and finished the song that night. We didn't know if that was going to make the album. We were just, you know, experimenting and just having fun, really just recording. And um, the mix came back, you know, we got the vocal arrangements done and it sounded right. It felt like it fit the concept. So that's how that track particularly made it on the album. Describe a little bit about the concept of the album because it is a concept album, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, the concept on the album is really... Um, about a, a, a group of teenage boys trying their best to escape the influences of the city but always getting drawn back in you know to ultimately one of them or a few of them have to make a decision you know on life on what path to lead what, where to go you know with themselves and um that's overall the, the message you know it can really trickle down from anybody from 20 to, to 45 years old that can relate to this album did you always imagine you were going to be sitting in studios abroad talking about your debut album um truthfully it never was an option once i found something that i like to do you know that i was actually good at 
this is all I knew, you know, that was going to happen eventually. You know, me and my partners were talking about the other day. It really wasn't no plan B. Um, I can really say that. It never know. is. Yeah. It, it's weird to, to even try to fathom thinking back then, you know, I didn't really have anything else I wanted to fall back on. And I try to put myself in a position like, man, what was I thinking? <laughs> How much determination and ambition is that to not, to know that this is going to happen? And it don't happen for everybody. You know, you really one out of a million to actually get this position that I'm in, that my team is in. That's the crazy thing about it. So um, I really think, you know, the energy and the amount of, of time put in it and the amount of thinking, you know, sleeping and thinking about it, you know, really came back full circle at the end of the day. How much work do you have to put in today now that you've got this album coming out and mm -hmm. it's just crazy right yeah definitely definitely um me and my older uh, older person in the game og in the game was talking about how much you know the young generation got to work two times harder than what the artist was doing in the 90s why is that and it's crazy um in the 90s you get signed you know you bring your demo and you knock on the label door three songs of your demo they sign you you write your album probably a year a year of time of spending time writing your album. Your album comes out, you sell records, then you go on tour. Nowadays, you have cats in their room, record their album, go out in the streets, pass their albums out, get a buzz, make another album, get a buzz, make another album, get another buzz. Now they're able to tour. Now they're able to tour, the labels come to them, they get signed to a major label. Now they're working on their debut album, and they're touring at the same time. So it's really a thin line between, you know, finding that balance, you know, as a new artist, because you got so much avenue, so many avenues you got to touch, you know, before the world, you know, able to know you. It's really a, a more of a grind than what they was doing in the 90s. And you look at artists like Mac Miller, you know, Wiz Khalifa, you know, that day doesn't stop. J. Cole, Wale, all these cats come from that circuit of, you know, putting music out on the Internet. You know, and when you're doing it yourself independently, you gotta move around like you're a one man band. When the lights shut off, and it's my turn to settle down, my main concern, promise that you will sing about me, promise that you will sing about me. I said, when the lights shut off, and it's my turn to settle down, my main concern, promise that you will sing about me, promise that you will sing about me. You've done a song with. Anna Wise. Yeah, definitely. From the Plug Research mm -hmm. Collective. Yeah. Um, so it's not just hip hop, right? There's oh, no. It's, it's, it's just music. It's just great music. I mean, it's really no boundaries. You know, she has an incredible voice and she's on majority of the background vocals on that album, if you can hear. You know, Kill My Vibe, Money Trees, Real, um, little intricate details on Mad City in the beginning. She, I, I've worked tons of records with her, you know, just the records that didn't make it. And, um, it wasn't really about the genre, you know. When I heard her sound, I heard her voice, I just thought it was unique, you know, and really could um, take this album to the next level. How do you go about writing all this, the way you're seeing stuff? Are you going home in a hotel room and writing little notes? Are you putting it, how are you sort of building up your repertoire of lyrics and all that? Uh, uh, really just, you know, throughout the day, I'm always writing through the day. I always write some type of idea down. Uh, yeah, whether it's in my phone notes or whether it's, you know, it's a sheet of paper. Um, Cause you're moving around so much, you don't want to lose, you know, something that might change the world or you change your life, you know. And it can come, it can come easily. It can come from me talking to a five-year-old boy, you know, rather than me coming coming from looking at art, you know, something as simple as that, you know, having a conversation with somebody. And uh, I just tend to write, you know, wherever I'm at. I just want to congratulate you on this record because um, there's a few records that have come along as albums. Right. There's, uh, for me, the, the, the first NERD album was quite a major record. Right. The Tribe Called Quest debut album, Nas. Yeah, definitely. And this is right up there. Appreciate and it. You've, you know, you've made a phenomenal record. It's joining lots of different dots Thank in you. music. And you can bring in a lot of people in. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much for coming in. Appreciate it. I do, I wonder, 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 wonder. I say what I want to say when I feel and I look in the mirror and know I'm there with my hands in the air. I'm proud to say it. I'm ready.